Jan Ozer here. Background noise and pops and clicks in audio are an unfortunate fact of life for many productions. Here's some fixes you can try in Final Cut Pro 10. Here's the clip I'm working on, and there's a couple of problems that you can see right off. Number one, levels are too low. The audio peaks should be up here towards the top of the waveform. Number two, if you play the audio file, you'll hear a pop there and a really big pop right over here. A little bit sleepy. Uh. So we want to boost the audio volume. And when we do that, we're going to increase some background noise. So we want to get rid of that as well. And we want to remove the pops and the clicks. Okay, there's a couple of different audio controls you can use to boost the volume. Let me close this so you can see how I got here. I click the clip and open the inspector window and we've got video, audio, and here's the audio enhancements. I've already analyzed the clip during import and there were no problems detected. If I click over here, I've got loudness controls, background noise removal, and we'll look at both of those in a second. First thing I want to do before I start any audio editing is to break the audio and the video portions of the clip apart. So I'm going to click the clip and choose Clip, Break Apart Clip Items. And now I can apply my audio edits down here, and nothing we do to the audio file is going to affect the video file. Okay, so a couple of different ways to adjust volume. We can use loudness, and then we can also use this control on the waveform itself. Now, loudness includes a component of compression, and not the streaming compression, but the compression that makes the voice sound louder, like the Saturday morning car advertisements. And this particular doctor doesn't need that. He's got a very distinctive voice, so we're not going to use this loudness control. We're just going to work on the waveform. Now, if you look at the waveform, you can see that as I boost the volume, drag it up, as I get closer to the top, we start to see red peaks here and yellow peaks here. Now, you don't want to hit the reds because that will cause clipping. So pull it down a little bit, and right around between 8 or 9 dB, we get, let's say 8 dB, we get the peaks in the yellow, which should give us plenty of volume, and there's nothing in the red except for this click, which we're going to cut out in a moment. Okay, so now let's listen to it, and let's listen to a quiet portion, and let's do a before and after. So here's before. Minutes. So it sounds pretty quiet, but when we boost the volume by 8 dB, we get some noticeable background noise. And we can remove that using the background noise removal tool. Make sure the clip is selected, enable this, and let's hear the result. So it's been about a so it's been about a so we went from this minutes so it's been to this. That's and we see that the noise is removed because the waveform itself is almost at the bottom of the of the waveform area. So anytime you apply background noise removal, there's a balance between how much noise you remove and introducing distortion into the voice. So let's listen to the voice. So it's been about a half an hour since you're finished. And he sounds a little bit metallic-y. So let me back down on this just a bit. Put a little bit of the noise back in. So it's been about a half an hour since you're finished. But it'll make sure that the voice sounds more natural. Okay, so we've got the volume levels about where we want it. Let's make sure the levels are still good. And I could boost a little bit more after the noise removal. Now let's go after these clicks. So here's one right here. And I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to click the B key to turn the selector into a razor blade. And I'm going to cut out the click region. 
Now select A to bring back the selection pointer. Now if I deleted this area, I'll just select it and choose delete. And should not do after the procedure. Uh, basically. What happens is we hear dead air in the area that we just deleted. So that's typically not a good solution. So let me Command Z to return the file. So what we want to do is we want to replace the click with some ambient noise. Now we see ambient noise here, we see ambient noise here. Now there's a really convenient way to bring this ambient noise here into this clip here. If you choose the T key on your keyboard, you get the trim pointer and then you can just click and drag until you see some ambient noise area come into the cut area where the click used to be. Let me Command Z and undo that. So here's the clip and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the trim tool to drag this area here back into here. I'm just going to left mouse key and drag over until I see ambient sound in there. And I know it's ambient sound because there's very little sound here. There's no peaks. And if we listen to it, for the procedure, uh, basically the medical for the procedure, uh, the click is gone and it's replaced with ambient noise. And let's attack the big one at the end here. And we have the same deal. Let me zoom in. I'm going to press the B key to get the razor blade, isolate the clip, press the T key to bring up the trim cursor, and then I want to drag this ambient noise here into the region here by left mouse clicking and dragging it over. So B. Uh. we've replaced the clip with ambient noise and fixed the problem. Okay, so that's it. You're seldom, if ever, going to capture absolutely perfect audio on location, but it's nice to know that Final Cut Pro has a couple of ways to help remove pops and clicks, boost volume, and remove background noise to make your audio sound better. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.